This video is for Learning Game A2, the impact of modern technologies, and this is focusing on the positive and negative impacts of modern technologies on organisations. The specification says we need to cover quite a bit of information here. We've got to focus on the positive and negative impact of modern technologies on organisations specifically, and this is looking at required infrastructure, the demand on infrastructure, the availability of infrastructure, 24-7 access, security of distributed or dispersed data, collaboration, inclusivity, accessibility and remote working. So the term infrastructure is the physical setup of an organisation. The impact of the infrastructure on an organisation has got many factors and this would include things like the setup costs, training staff, how long it takes to set up, how long it takes to test, the maintenance, the running costs, the security and backup. Organisations must always weigh up the benefits versus the drawbacks of setting up technologies when thinking about the infrastructure. So when making decisions about infrastructure, this can have benefits and drawbacks on the organisation. For example, with the communication technologies, it's now the norm for staff to have multiple devices in the workplace. And the benefit to this is that there's less paperwork and it's easier for the workers to collaborate. However, it can be intrusive as staff can be contacted at any time which may affect their work. The local platforms set up when regards to infrastructure is where the software is installed onto an actual machine. Now this would run faster and not require the internet. However, the drawbacks are that it cannot be accessed outside the business. Then we can look at web-based platforms is where the software is used on the cloud. And this can be accessed from anywhere, which is a major benefit. However, it's often slower and it's dependent on the actual internet connection. With regards to security, if we have data that's distributed or dispersed, it means it can be stored over more than one server and across a network. The locations of the different data need to be mapped out so the data can be found when it's needed. For example, on a concert tickets website, if it was based in England, this might have data for the tickets being processed in Germany. The data might then be shared with customers anywhere in the world. So there's a lot of different communication going on and all of this data needs to be kept secure. So the benefits on an organisation of using IT for their security means that the data is less likely to be lost because it's not centralised in one place. The security should be greater because the location of the storage is not known. And the data can be accessed from different networks. This should also mean there's a greater reliability of the system. The drawbacks of having a multi-network setup or having your data distributed are that there's more locations to protect. You also need to track the locations of the data and it will take longer to access your data. Usually there'd be some sort of additional software required for this setup. So the benefit for organisations of 24-7 access, when we are thinking about the use of technology, the major benefit is that we can access customers anywhere in the world. We don't always need to set up an actual business as a premises. In other words, we don't have an actual store. Sometimes this means the business may be easier or cheaper to set up. And we can collect information about customers more easily. The drawbacks for organisations from using technology are that lots of customers might still like to visit an actual shop or business and speak to a person. And you need to make sure that you build good relationships with customers as you will have more competition competing online. So when we think about how technology has impacted collaboration, we can look at different types of technologies. When we think about file sharing, the benefits are that it enables employees to work together and share the workload. 
However, there can be inconsistencies in terms of the version of the document that people are working on. If we think about the use of wikis, this means that multiple members can all edit parts of the same website. However, some information could be incorrect if many people are posting at the same time. Blogs allow people to post about stories or, or their area of expertise in your business. However, they need to be regularly posted to keep people updated. Chat systems are really useful for helping staff access information quickly without having full phone conversations. However, these systems can be used unprofessionally or people waste time on them instead of working. Teleconferencing means that staff can collaborate easily in different locations, but keep that level of face-to-face -face contact. The drawbacks of teleconferencing is that a strong internet connection is required. When we think about the impact on inclusivity, the benefits are that technology has made it easier for organisations to be inclusive. We think about how a wide age range is allowed to basically participate in the business by allowing flexible working hours. This helps those with health needs or accessibility features that can't be necessarily met in the workplace. They can be work, uh, allowed to work from home. We can also help people from other cultures due to helping them work from home during religious periods. The drawbacks are that there's obvious added costs. Sometimes we might have difficulty meeting deadlines if staff are absent. And we might miss deadlines if staff are at home due to a religious practice. With regards to accessibility, organisations are required by law to make certain adaptations. In addition to all the technology we've already covered, many organisations are now supporting the use of wearable technologies like smartwatches. The benefits of all of this use of ICT are that staff can do their work more easily, staff are more likely to feel supported and they're easier to contact and communication has improved. Wearable devices makes contact even easier without using phones. The wearable devices also means that we can capture health information e.g. the number of steps and heart rate. The drawbacks of this is the obvious added costs and some needs for accessibility are difficult to meet. Some staff are actually dubious about sharing their personal data with a business. When we think about technology and remote working, we can think about the benefits and the drawbacks. The benefits of remote working are that we can access a more diverse group of workers. In other words, we might be able to use someone's skill set from a different part of the world. Usually we'll find that there's happier staff because people can work wherever they feel like they work the best. We also have the fact that we'd have less office space required and therefore less utility bills to pay. The disadvantages is that interaction might be limited between workers. You as an organisation would also have less control over checking on what people are doing. And some staff might not feel trusted if they are being monitored.